This past week, I had the pleasure of spending four days in Fukuoka, Japan. In this time, we explored so many beautiful areas, experienced the culture, and learned the history of Fukuoka. There is so much to do in this beautiful city, and I will be sharing everything we did in the time we visited. Now, please enjoy our first full day in Fukuoka, Japan. Hello everyone and welcome back to another vlog. As you can tell, I'm in the train station and there's a lot of noise right now, so I hope you can hear me. And I'll catch you up to speed on what we did yesterday because we actually landed pretty early. We landed around like before noon. We were able to go hit up this little wine oyster bar. We did some shopping. We went to an izakaya, a local izakaya, and then enjoyed some yakitori and other fun izakaya food. Um, but our real trip starts today. So today we are headed over to an island. I can't remember what the name of it is, so I'll put the name of it here and then each day we have something else planned so I'm just gonna be taking you taking you around what we do what we eat and we're just gonna be going with the flow and seeing how it goes so let's hope, head over to the island in order to get to Nokonoshima Island you have to take a short ferry but first we stop to get some bread at this local bakery as a quick little breakfast if you haven't had bread in Japan, you are definitely missing out. And of course, we had to get a little coffee as well. Although there is a bus that takes you directly to the ferry terminal, we decided to walk because we love to explore the local neighborhoods of Japan. When we travel, we love to get a feel for how the locals live their daily life, and walking around neighborhoods is the perfect way to do so. To get to the Nokonoshima Flower Park, you have to take the local bus. When we first got off the ferry, we were kind of wandering around and had no idea where to go, but luckily one of the locals helped us. When you exit the ferry, the bus stop on the left is the bus for arrivals, and the stop on the right is where they'll pick you up. The ride is only $1.70 a person, and it will take you exactly where you need to go. The ride itself is a little sketchy because the entire road is one lane and there are many steep and bumpy ways up, but the views and the destination make it totally worth it. So each season this park has different flowers and this for summer they have sunflowers, however they're all dead, which is kind of sad. They look like depressed little sunflowers. <laughs> But it's still pretty, right? It's still pretty. Those ones up there are a little bit happier. And it's still breathtaking to see this many flowers, but they're really sad flowers. <laughs> My best tip for coming here is definitely arrive early. We got here on the 9 a.m. ferry and there was only one other couple on the bus, so it felt like we had the entire park to ourselves. It also turns out that there were so many other types of flowers, and the sunflowers were just in that one area. If you come here with children, they have this like 
park situation over here and then they have another park situation. You can also rent stilts. <laughs> so random. And then they have a little store over here we're about to check out. The only downside of arriving early is that most of the shops and restaurants were closed and didn't open until around 11. But if you come here later, there is a cafe and a few restaurants serving traditional foods like tempura and udon noodles. To us, it was still worth it because we could walk around without anyone else being there. But if that's something that's important to you, I would definitely keep that in mind. We found this little park. This is like Japanese parks for you. No turf to be seen. You could just climb on the rope, climb up the ladders, get some little slides over here. What does it taste like? Blueberry. Blueberry. That's better than a grape though. We got popsicles. I got matcha. Aiden got blueberry apparently. But is it good? Mm, it's milkier than I thought. It's like homemade. We love. We have like, I know, I think we should get one. We collect magnets, so I definitely want to get one for the island. And then also they have these really cute omiyage which is like a Japanese, the word for Japanese souvenirs of cookies. And it's for Nokonoshima Island and the flowers. So I'm gonna get one of these to bring to work. So cute. On the way down the mountain, it started pouring rain and we got completely soaked. So this is your reminder to bring an umbrella even if the rain isn't on the forecast because we definitely wish we did. Depending on where you are in Japan, some restaurants will have English menus and some won't. This restaurant was very local and only had a Japanese menu. Although we know katagana and hiragana, most of the menu was in kanji and Google Translate could not properly translate it. So we ended up ordering two orders of inari because we could read that, but for the udon, we chose the first thing on the menu because we thought that was a safe option. It turned out to be a bucket of hot udon that came with a dipping sauce. While this ended up being amazing, looking back at it now, I should have just asked what they recommended and ordered that, but this would do. Although we did wish we got toppings on our udon, this was some of the best udon we had ever had. The noodles tasted so soft and fresh and the dipping sauce was delicious. After we ate the udon, Aiden was still hungry and could not resist ordering the katsudon. As you can tell, he really enjoyed this. I found this mochi that literally has a grape inside of it, so I had to try it on camera, obviously. So you're not left out. So they're not left out, not you. Just to be clear. <laughs> Cheers.
That's where we're going. going. So we're walking over to the Fukuoka Tower right now. Um, it only took a couple stops from where we were at before, but the walk is a little bit long, but that's okay. And then once we get there, apparently there's the Fukuoka Tower, but then there's also an observatory and a little museum situation. So looking forward to seeing what it's all about over there. We ended up going to the Fukuoka City Museum, but they asked us not to record, so of course I respected that. The museum was very informative of Fukuoka's history and cultural development, and if you wanted to learn the history of Fukuoka, I would definitely recommend. You want Dakara? Hmm? You want Dakara? Yes, please. I just wanted to say Takara. <laughs> Alrighty, I just wanted to do a little update. It's almost 5 o'clock and we literally went, I think we left the room around 7 o'clock and we just got back so it has been a full day we are gonna get dinner soon but we want to shower and stuff and i'm still hungry because i didn't eat two meals when we ate lunch i only ate the udon so i needed a little something before i shower and like freshen up for dinner so i have a little kumbini kumbini with katie if you saw that video kumbini, oh, kumbini with katie um haul nothing crazy just a little something to hold me over so first, I got an Aquarius for the electrolytes, which if you didn't know what Aquarius is, it's basically like Japanese Gatorade, but not as sweet. Mm. I like always feel refreshed after that because it's also really hot outside. It is August in Fukuoka, so it's to be expected, but you know. And then I was feeling like I needed some vegetables so this is my favorite little snack to get at kombinis when i need like something fresh like a vegetable because it comes with a miso mayo i hope you can see that and then like a bunch of different little sliced veggies and you just have a little dip for your veg mm. it's so good and you know when you just like need vegetables i feel like i'm so off my routine and I crave veggies, so this is hitting the spot. Lastly, I got a chewy taiyaki with custard cream, which is definitely like, you know, you can get better taiyaki um, at like local places, but this is my favorite 7-Eleven treat, and they don't always have it, so when I see it, I have to get it. But I'll show you. A little fish. I feel like a lot of taiyaki is cake where this one tastes more like mochi and then the center part has custard. Mmm. I hope you didn't see that. Mmm. That's so good. Probably one of my favorite treats from 7-Eleven. I'm gonna eat for a little bit. Take a shower. Freshen up, all that good stuff. And we'll see you when we choose what we're gonna eat for dinner. Okay, when we first got to Fukuoka yesterday, we found all these tents, but none of them were set up, and Aiden and I love street food, and now it's 6 o'clock, so the tents are actually set up, so we're going to check out this little street food area and see what we can find.
mayo and green onion. Aiden got namabidu, just draft beer, and I got a lemon sour. back just because there is a lot of food but there's so much food in this area so I think we're gonna do a little bit of izakaya hopping so we can show you so many different kinds of Japanese foods and then maybe we'll go back to that little street food area later to finish off the night but I don't know we'll see there's really no rhyme or reason to this we just go with the flow that's the theme of the video we ended up finding this quaint izakaya that specialized in yakitori and wow, it was amazing. We ordered this sashimi with sesame paste and I know I keep saying everything is the best I ever had but this sashimi was so fresh and delicious and I've never had something like the sesame paste with sashimi before. Aiden also ordered a draft beer and I stuck to my lemon sours for the night. We also ordered so many different kinds of yakitori, like pork belly, shrimp, and scallops. Is it bacon? <laughs> After the izakaya, we stopped in to this little Irish pub to have a little drink, and then we headed back over to the food stalls that we started at. Is it good? Is it warm? We both got one more drink, and then we also ordered this yakisoba topped with egg. It was a great way to end the night. 